Instagram Live. Hello, everybody. This is Keith Thompson sucking off Becky's Power Tools with Thread. What we're going to do today is give you a entry into Legit Kits, which we get from the company Legit Kits. Mike owns it. What I'm going to do today to show you this is Block of the Month. You can't get it anymore. They, this is something new they started. They're all sold out for this block, but it's going to demonstrate how easy it is to make a quilt. And what really I like about it, you don't have to have a lot of fancy sewing equipment to do it. It's easy, it's fun, and anybody can do it. I'm using Becky's Power Tools with Thread YouTube just to get this started. And before we start, I want to show you what you need in your kits. Hopefully I can do this. This is what you're going to need. You're going to need your cutter. Now I might do this a little different than what a lot of people do in paper piecing, but it's really easy. I have my truly seam ripper because you might have to take something apart. So it's there just in case. My magnet, in case I want to pick up my pins that I drop on the floor quite often. And this is the key to paper piecing. If you ask me, it's called add a quarter ruler. And what it does, it has... There's a link in the description for that. There's a link in the description. I got Becky talking to me over here now, so it could be very hard. <laughs> it has a little edge on there, so when you add it, and I'll demonstrate that when we get started. And you need a hard piece of paper. They do make a real thin layer of plastic that you can use, but you can see I've used this quite a long time. It's got a little, it was an error, but this side's still good for the long piece. You're gonna need a little iron to iron with, and you're gonna need your starch for keeping this stuff down and making it easy. So I'm gonna show you what's in the kit, and then I'm gonna go over how we set it up it's really simple. I looked through this and I think it's great. If you pull the kit out, and what's really nice about this is Mike's made it so easy. Basically, it tells you what we're going to do today on the block of the month. It gives you the four blocks, A, B, and C. And what that's what the finished quilt would look like today. Not the whole thing. And then when we get done with the whole, all these blocks put together, it will create this. And notice how they have all the colors. It's really super easy. I'm going to make it hopefully easier for everybody. And today it tells me that I have one, two, three, four, five, six different colors of fabric. And what they do is they, they tell you what size they are. Here we got one here that's only five by five. That's called scrap. We have a fat eighth yard, a fat sixteenth of a yard, and another, you know, so that tells you the size. Again, fabric list by code again, and that's why I like it. it it's like paint by numbers. It tells me what to use, when to use it. Can, can you hold that up really close to the camera so they can see the lettering? Hold it real still. See, each color has two digits for the colors. Like B.I. is Bright Idea, C.K. is Cactus, H.R. is Sartreuse, uh, K.L. is Key Lime, Q.R. is Ferndale, S.A. is Sour Apple. Don't try to memorize all this because Wonderful Mike has made many, many colors. Basically, in a quilt, you can use up to 100 different colors in a full quilt. What, what is that page? This page is the assembly guide. This is what we're going to do. The first one, you have B1A and B1. We'll be sewing those together, and it has different colors. It kind of, You're going to see it fall together as pieces. Can you hold that up real close so we can see the little letters behind there? So KL is on the top. HR is at about 2 o'clock. CK is down at the bottom. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, now he also provides this, which is really nice. For each color of fabric he gets, he shows how you need to cut it. Now, these are not two sides, so don't 
cut that out as a pattern because that will not work. But it tells you where you should put the, your pattern to cut the fabric. And this is for just this color. You're going to cut two pieces out of this color. And it does that for all of them, all six of the colors. So that paper tells you where to place the cut piece on the fabric scrap that you have so it will fit. Right. Okay. And like I said, I do it a little different, So, but it, it's nice. Now notice this one. We have one very busy. We're going to do a lot of cuts out of this color, which is the key lime. Three cuts out of this one. And then your last one over here. So it gives you the colors of what the fabric and what you're going to be cutting out of it. And that's what I mean. This, this project is really basic and it's a lot of fun. The legit kits have really put this together to make it easier for everybody. And you don't have to be a seamstress. We're here just to have fun. The next one is the pattern. So what we're going to do today, we will complete. These are thin papers. Where would this complete square we will complete, which is A, A2. And we will end up sewing those together. And then you have B, A, B1, A, and B1, B. And the final one is B2. So it's going to be simple. A lot of fun. So hold up that one for the last page that you had. I want to, I want to kind of show something. Okay. So the, the big B2 is the name of that block. And there are four pieces in the B2 block and they are numbered one, two, three, and four with four different color code lettering schemas on the block. So I hope that makes sense. And if anybody has questions at all, feel free to pop them into the comments. I'll put them up on the screen and Keith can answer them. Yeah. See, this is B1A and B1B. What's it going to be? We'll end up sewing these together. I mean, I can't. Yeah, I get it. When I do this, it'll make a lot more sense. Cause it's, but basically, this is what's going to happen. We'll sew it to make the block. And it'll look like that. So this is B1. You got B1A, B1B. And the numbers are, that's the order that you sew the fabric together. Ah, okay. All right. Not going to go through the fabric because, like I said, we have six different pieces here. And this is what we call a scrap. And there's your fat quarters. But it's really simple. He has everything nice. Everything pre-cut for you. Put the sticker up to the camera so they can see the sticker. This is very hard to do when you got okay. somebody telling you what to do. So that lettering schema, see that big HR? That's that's how you know what to use based on the letters that are on your paper pattern. And let me tell you, if you do buy a big quilt, you make a mistake, you run out of material. If you bought the kit from Legit Kits, all you have to do is notify them and tell them what color you need, and they will send it to you because that is part of their business practice. All right, and he sends you a little magnet that you can put on your refrigerator or anywhere to remind you, and this is what the kit's going to look like when we get done, believe it or not, so you can keep track of this stuff. Now, as you see... In my area here, this is uh, my little sewing machine or ironing board and cutting table that I made. I do have plans for it. If you want it, we can probably give them to you. But this folds down so you can hide it somewhere else if you have space. Because if you notice, my sewing room is not as big as Becky's wonderful sewing room that she took over for me. <laughs> and I'm going to put these back. Now, if we can move the camera around... I'm going to let Becky move. I want to show you how easy. I don't have a fancy machine. Careful not to make them sick. Kind of go slow. And we're not going to be able to zoom in here, but this is the BQ950 Brother. It's a 
like I said, it's pretty much a simple machine, but it does a lot. If you buy a sewing machine, the two things that I really recommend is the auto cut and the auto needle. Well, it's not auto, but it loads your needle. Needle threader. Self threader. Those two things are ideal for doing this. For paper piecing, you want to take your size down to zero or one zero. What I do is I do it on the center of the foot and then we'll take it down to 1.0 which gives you a real small stitch all right so to get now what kind of thread are you using just plain white cotton thread whatever my wife gave me okay the thread he's using is a essential pro white this is a cotton poly from connecting threads and he has the same thread in the bobbin yeah and make sure you have a bobbin when you're getting started with this check your bobbin this sewing machine also has an extra table to give you a little more room to set on and what kind of table are you on and uh, you know i don't want to give all the kudos <laughs> i entered ended up with uh, becky's martelli cutting table sewing table or well, they call it a workstation it all is hydraulic it goes up and down once it comes up on an angle for ergonomics ergonomic <laughs> and what's that mat you've got under there is that their that's their non-skid non-skid mat especially if you're using an embroidery machine where it's going to be jumping around that's why it has a mat on there this is not an embroidery machine so i just have it on there so it stays on and then you can take the table up and down you're so gonna... <laughs> my heart <laughs> this is why i have my own sewing room so i don't upset my poor wife <laughs> okay as we come back over here to get started i'm gonna get all this we're starting with one a and i'm gonna put all this up but since mike provided all this stuff we're gonna have to use part of it we got a question keith does the fabric that month does the fabric that comes each month only for that month or will i need to keep it for other months i'm ex excited to start mine no that each month you will get the fabric that you need for that block. Okay. Oh, so you might get chartreuse more than once. Right. Oh, okay, great. So here we are. We have A1, and we're going to start here. One, first one is QR, second one is SA, <laughs> and three is Key Lime or KL. So I'm going to go over here to my fabric that is provided. And this is where you get it. I spread it out all over the. Uh -oh. One must be hidden. <laughs> what you missing? That little yellow one? I saw oh, it. Oh, it's too cold. See, you gotta pay attention, Keith. Yeah, dear. <laughs> yes, dear. So, what are you doing here? Okay, so this is what I want to do. So you have a cutting mat on one side and a ironing table on the other. Okay. Let's see, we get real fancy here. These are the three colors that we're going to be putting on block one. But notice some of them have folds. So what we're going to do is do a quick iron to make sure, you know, you don't want to have no wrinkles in your starting fabric. What kind of iron is that? A beautiful Amazon iron. <laughs> Amazon iron that I had to buy because my wife gives me the old stuff. <laughs> and mine went out. I really like this one because you can monitor the heat settings. It does not shut itself off, but it, it will shut down, but not totally. I'll put a link to it below the video. Okay, that one's flat. First one, 
And the reason I like to iron these, and I leave the stickers on the fabric because that way I don't lose them. Becky can do fabrics by the color. I have to have the stickers with the names on them. Vicki says it's very nice of you to take time to show this to everybody. Oh, no, Vicki, this is fun. I mean, I've been doing it, and I just like to get more people interested in it because, you know, since my wife wouldn't do it, I had to step up. <laughs> Becky Campus says, I'm not sure Becky's as mean as you say. I know you're picking. <laughs> Oh, I'm not picking on her. I'm just telling the truth. She wouldn't do it, so I had to do the eagle. The eagle quilt is on the long arm right now. Lisa almost got done before she left. So Becky or I will have to finish that up. Okay, now. You're not using my long arm. No. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> so the first one we're going to use is QR. Why, why QR? Because that's what it said. Where's the paper that says it? Right here. And what I'm looking for is that piece that says QR. Oh, we're going to key line. We're going to key line. Hey. It's right there in your hand. Other hand, you just set it down on the left. QR? Yeah, where's that? SA is over on the right hand and QR. Oh. So here's what we're going to make the cut one and two. So I can just use the corner. And remember, pacing, paper piecing, your number one is always going to be on top. Face up. Face up. So here's QR. So when you're dealing with these solids, does face up matter? Well, okay, not face up. It has to be on top. That's what I meant. Okay. But no, it doesn't. That's one good thing about legit kits. It's all solid. So you don't have to worry about the fabric content. Okay. So, so okay. I'm, okay. I'll let you go. I, I have questions too. I don't understand what you're doing. You're teaching me. All right, so first thing you do, we got block one. We take our cardboard and put it along the line and fold it over. So you have the edge. Oh, you have a crease now. Now I have a crease on there and SA is going to be underneath. How do you know SA is underneath? Because I told you it's going to be underneath. <laughs> SA is piece number two, right? Right. And that's we know that's number two because there's a two with a circle on the part that says SA. Oh, I see. You're sewing two pieces. Okay, got you. And like I said, what you do now, you're gonna have to turn that over here. Okay, hold on a minute. Oh. All right. Okay, when I said the first piece has to be on top, it has to be on top. And the good thing about that, I'm going to let her get the camera a little closer. So QR, which is my green, is going to be when we fold it back. And the reason we did the half inch you know, it's nice to be able, if you can just take along there, get your quarter inch seam allowance. But when I do that on this one, I won't make it. So it's better to have a little extra? Yes, I'm going to show you that. See, my little corner over here is not long enough. Oh, I can't, it can't, they can't see it in the camera. Okay. Oh, I see. They, they, so what, again, this is my technique of cheating. It's not cheating. It's because you have plenty of fabric. Line these two colors up together here. And then I got my line. Notice on this one, I can't get it. We'll see that on the next one. But since QR is on top, 
it's the easiest one to do and I have plenty of fabric there and I know I'm only cutting one piece out of that I'm gonna check to make sure that my wife yeah no two pieces I'll have one other little piece let me show these on so I can serve as much as I can and here we go and this is my technique not the dick kit You know, it's at the small sticks, and I don't go 100 miles an hour like y'all probably do. Okay, then you cut it. All right. Now we're going to come around here and see if I did any good. Let me back up because we can't get no lower on the camera. Okay, so which piece is okay, number this, one? Number one is QR, which is on top here. Okay. And I say, now with my technique, like I said, I did a little different. We're going to go back and fold it there. And what I'm going to do is put my paper under here to help out. You're and I'm going to go ahead and do my add a quarter, not on my cutting deal, because my. Wife would have a fit. On your. Now he always leaves the sticker on the fabric. So that's the very last piece he'll use, and sometimes he moves the stickers around. Okay. And then we fold it back over here. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but it works. It'll make sense in the end here on this square. Okay, now I got two great big pieces. And since I left the seam allowance here, I know I'm gonna need some of this left over. But I'm not going to be cutting anymore. I take the ruler, not adding anything. Where are you placing the ruler? Is that on the edge of that gray? On the edge of the gray would be the pattern. Now, I save these little pieces in case I have to put them together. That's happening. And then I put it down here. So that is still QR piece number one that you're cutting right now. Yes. Okay. QR basically was that one piece. Okay, so we have the first one and two sewn together. So the next step is number three. And this will probably make more sense because you have, we won't be using such a big piece. Fold it over. Okay, you got your fabric here. And this is when you use your add a quarter. Place it on there. Press down. And what I do, I know where I'm at. I always cut a little extra. I mean, you can measure it and pre-cut everything. But you can see I already got two pieces together now. Oh, there. And I left the sticker on there. <laughs> I'll take the sticker. <laughs> Which is not a problem. And so now we're going to go in the key line. SA, when I do is I throw it over here to the side for the other one. And key line, key line. I'm going to do a bunch of cuts there. The first one's in the corner. So I'm going to take that, it goes on the bottom, okay, remember always, the first one goes on top. Now I want to show you on this, 
if you line it up all the way on the end, you got to be able to fold it over. This is where you got to watch this because if I took it too far, I wouldn't have enough fabric. But all I did was put my quarter inch seams together here. And then we're going to sew that one down. And you just follow the line. There's no hurry. This one will make a whole lot more sense as a smaller piece. We got it. This is bring it back to your Hold on. ironing table. You're fast. Hold on there, Speedy. Just a minute. <laughs> Go ahead. That's the iron table. Just iron that back down. And basically, you're almost done with this first block. Because all I have to do now is trim. And you go out to, like Becky said, you want to go to the outside. That's your quarter and seam allowance for when you sew them together. And make sure you don't have your fabric overlapping because then you'll cut it. And the reason I know that, I've done it many times. And we set that aside and we trim all four sides. And like I said, you have perfect i go ahead and do a little starch to keep it flat that looks great look how easy that was and you've got a perfect quarter inch right there in that point she's pointing at this yeah that will be going together so that's the big piece and we move on to number two which i moved over here Barefoot sewing. <laughs> oh, and I also didn't tell you that each page is numbered at the bottom. You got four of five, three of five. So this way you don't get them out of order. This is going to be a nice, easy one. Now, again, my technique, I take your added quarter and put it, add the quarter off of the pattern. Because that way you have a little bit extra. Let me have all those extra sheets over no, there. No, I don't want you to. <laughs> See, to you got the extra quarter down there. And it makes the pattern smaller to work with. But it gives you that extra area because it makes the way that I do it with folding and everything. And I have my trash can at the end. So I need key lime. And HR. Right here. HR is a scrap. Come back over here and remember what I said. The number one color goes on top. Number one is key lime, so that goes on top for the very first piece. After that, everything goes underneath, right? On the bottom. No, don't say don't, that. Don't say that? Okay. It's backwards sewing. <laughs> no. Oh, we got to do our fold. So that's all I'm going to use out of HR. The key line is going to have a bunch. So 
what I'm going to do, what I do is I try to take the corners first, the long way corners. But you got to make sure you're covering. These kits are so simple. Okay, I lined up. I got my quarter inch here. All I have to do it. I'm going to speed up a little bit on this. And the reason you use the 1.0 is because when you take this paper off, what I want to show you is I made sure that I have enough key line that covers this whole area. Because the HR, we're just going to be cutting a little piece off when we're done. My cameraman's sloughing over there. <laughs> Once again, we bring it back. I'm getting knotted up over there. Flatten it out. Bring it to the cutting table. Flip it over. Now see, it looks cattywampus, but if you trim it up to the pattern size, That just is so backwards in my brain. I, I can't think. <laughs> now the professionals, they actually cut everything to size by using the design and adding on extra half inch. I find it this way much easier to do. So now we have B that piece done. B1A is done. B1A is done. We set it up here because we're going to use it in a minute. We get the next page, which is B1B. Get my fabric out of the way so I don't cut it. Let me show the add a quarter ruler while you're cleaning up. So the add a quarter ruler. This is a must if you're going to be paper piecing. I've heard that from so many people. It has a little ridge on the underside that you push up against the seam. And then it will make sure that you have a perfect quarter inch seam allowance cut. Oh, I'll this just use another ruler since you took it away. <laughs> All I did was trim up the pattern again for 1B. Okay, now we have three different fabrics here. Take one, use your cardboard on the line, fold it over, get all your fabric. I need CK. And I'm going to iron that center down on CK since we haven't used it yet. What's this end of the fabric called? Selvage. What? A selvage. Selvage end. I usually try to cut that off because if I'm not paying attention, I'll use it. And I don't. Don't. Doesn't look good. So that's one. 
and one goes on top or bottom. You decline that call. That's you. Live, you guys. <laughs> okay, so now we got B1 is number two, so that goes underneath, remember? First piece is on top. Number one is always on top. And it's the easiest one to do because you don't have to worry about. You don't have to worry about getting it backwards. Backwards or cutting it too short because you know you can see that it's going to cover the whole area. Okay, so I got those two together. over now since you have a third fabric on here coming on go ahead to save your fabric go ahead and measure it out flip it over notice I have two different fabrics that I'm going to be cutting through and in the more complicated ones you might be cutting three different fields. put your add a quarter in there I add a little bit on the end Now come back here. Notice I'm not cutting on the pattern. I just want to get that piece of fabric out. It's just a scrap. Then I'm going to come back and trim this one. So you're not cutting up the pattern at all. No, that's why I leave an extra. That makes it easier. Eighth of an inch. Now, when you're down here at the end, you can go ahead and cut the pattern because you're not going to add anything on there. I flip that away so when I cut this, I don't want to cut into my fabric. I might need that. Okay, so now we got one and two. We need key line for three. We've already folded it over because we cut it and had the quarter inch. I believe it's key line. Oh, I need my cameraman. I'm going to show another technique on this one. Okay. Okay, notice you'll see a lot of this in your uh, paper piecing. It's the triangles. Since I have the triangle point here, I'm going to flip this over because that way I'm going to save fabric. Oh, I see. So you put the pointed part of the pattern with the pointed part of the fabric. Yeah, because okay. you're going to have the fat people over there. <laughs> you're going to have the fat fabric over here. <laughs> Oh, this. But live. <laughs> okay, so the diamond, now when we fold it, and like the, I think this saves fabric the way I do it. You had a lot of fabric left from both the fox and the eagle. Because I'm not real good at figuring out the sizes, cutting it. Now we're done. And I'm going to go ahead and spray this with starch before I cut it.
cut down to the pattern size now because we're done with all the fabric. Everybody falling asleep yet? Okay, so now we got two B or not to be and one B. <laughs> okay, so they go, we're gonna go like that. We'll go ahead and put those together since we're so doing it. How do you make sure that you get those stitching lines right? Well, when I find my pins that my wife took. I think they're in that gray rolly tray. Careful of the dog. Frito's down there underneath the cabinet. Supervise him. Supervise him. <laughs> okay. Technique. Again, I know I have three points there. So I'm going to put a pin right where hold all... On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get it. Okay, show it up close to the camera. Okay, I saw the three points. This is where I'm putting the pin in that three points. It makes it real easy. And then if you look at the pattern, it's going to go there, and you're going to have a quarter inch. So I just. If they're supposed to go together, right? Well, yeah, I hope they're supposed to go together. You line it up. And this is what's nice about having all the paper and directions. So you know, it's like putting a puzzle, puzzle together. So by having that pin in there, I know my points are lined up. And you'll see in a second there, we take, and I hate to say, you know, my wife taught me this. <laughs> I line up a lot of blocks. Because my first one that I did had a lot of not so close. Okay. And then you can either do this the way you're used to doing it with a quarter inch. I go down the paper for the quarter inch. If you done good, well, in this case, I'm just, I hate to show it. No, it looks good. You're like a stitch. But I'm about to stitch off. That's when you can use your Crusty seam ripper. You don't need to stitch unstitch that. Are you going to unstitch that? No. I wouldn't. And all you got to do, I, I mean, we can continue on and do the next two blocks. But I really don't think. So we've been live for 43 minutes now, 44 minutes. So you uh, want to wrap up or? Yeah, I, I wanted to show you the technique on there. All you got to do for the next two, which is number two and then you know you got the technique of this one's easy just keep adding on the block will be done and then when you get these done you sew them together just like we did with this one and so so far what we've done is a one one a and uh, one b so you see it on the back, that's how they will go together. You want to make sure, and in the guide it tells you, so you've got, 
You want to make sure you line up the. Is that right? There you okay, go. there we go. And not always do all the lines line up because of the pattern. But I got to make sure. That's when you go to the assembly guide. Mary Flynn wants me to clone you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Lisa's on. Oh, Lisa Tablet. So we have A1. This gives you your guide. And this is pattern size. So we'd have it like we don't match there, see? Everything looks backwards when you're putting these together. Let me tell you. There's another page I think that is correct because there's two of those. Well, you have pattern size and you have yeah. finish size. So what it is now, we're going to go over here with one. Yes. And I must have done, oh, I did one A. B1 A and B1 B. You did that right. You just got, no, you didn't do, do A2. That's what happened. Yeah, we got the other. Got out of order. That's okay. It's out of order. Yeah, this one goes over here. The next one goes in the middle. That's why I did. But you put them together. This is what the guy to look for. And we'll continue on. I'll have them all done. Show to start off the next. Everybody's saying hand, hi. We're up to 101 people. Everybody's oh. waving and saying hi. <laughs> okay. Hey, there we are. Yeah, what I did is I did B1, so this is supposed to be A2 to match, and B2, we got a little bit out of order. That's okay. So show them uh, Autumn behind you when you get finished. Oh, as you can see, well, you can see it in the background. That was Autumn Fox, the first one I did. And like I said, that's the end. Don't try to overthink it because you'll see these pictures. You know it's supposed to be an ear or an eye. But until you put it all together, it really doesn't pop. And that's what you'll see in here. Have fun with it. And we'll get this all done. We got a whole year to do it. And you'll get one each month. All the fabrics there. And we'll get this done. Okay. And thanks. As my wife says, go something. Go sew something. Oh, go sew something. <laughs> well, go something too, you know. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>